So what do you guys think? Carburetor. Any chance it'll work? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. The question for today, can we run a carburetor on an M90 supercharger? And how does it compare to fuel injection? And then if we run fuel injection and a carburetor, what happens if we run both? Okay guys, you can see we have our fuel injected 5.3 with the M90 supercharger on there. This is an early Gen 3 supercharger. We even have a dual stack throttle body air. We got the factory one and then we got the fast throttle body. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna pull the fast throttle body off. I'm gonna see if I can configure uh, an elbow that comes up. And then what we wanna do up here, <laughs> where there's nothing, we wanna to try to mount a carburetor so we can run our supercharged combination with a carb. Okay, see, we marked our tube. What I'm gonna do is put this on there, get this level so we can put our carburetor on there. Let's head to the chop saw. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Rev everything. I always mark the wrong side. <laughs> Okay, so here are the edges of the wire wheel, make sure there's no sharp edges. Now I'm just gonna clean out the tube so we can bolt it okay, on. Okay, making the carburetor mount here. What I've done is put a gasket on there, trace it, mark the holes so I can drill them so that we can put this on top of there. Thanks, Wilson. <laughs> West Tech has that in the cabinet. So what I'll do is, you can see I've marked the holes. I just need to drill holes so that I can put these bolts through that hold the carburetor, hold the spacer, and then hold it to that plate. You can see my custom Super Richie, yeah, that's a duct tape or Gorilla tape gasket. Should hold fine. Okay, got our holes drilled. Let's see if we can't line this up while I'm also filming. Look at that. Hey, there you go. Everybody cooperate. Okay, yeah, got our coupler installed onto the throttle body and for the guys that will ask during the video, the throttle body is actually wired open. So the only thing controlling the throttle is the carburetor when we open the blade. Yeah, carbureted. We got a carburetor on the M90. We got our fuel lines hooked up. Let's fill it full of fuel, go in, see if it starts. Whoa, 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 whoa. Crazy shake, crazy shake. All right, let's see. Put you guys over here. See what happens. Turn our fan on. We got our fuel pump. Seven PSI going to the Holly. Give it a couple of pumps. Fingers crossed. Ooh, I heard something. It's alive! <laughs> Look! A little on the rich side. She's a runner though. The carburetor up and running. <laughs> yeah, now let's see if it makes power. Yes,
okay, we can see. <laughs> Ran the carburetor just right out of the box. Worked fine. It's a little on the rich side, so I'm going to go in and take some jet out of it and see if we can richen it up. But man, the roll-in was a little bit of a struggle, but after we got it rolled in, this thing's making good power, man. Let's go out and jet it and see if we can make even more. All right, change some jets. So we got 74s in the front and 80s in the back. I think I'm gonna go down two in the front and three in the back. Let's see what happens. Okay, we've made carburetor runs and it actually works really, really well. It made just a little bit more power than the fuel injection did, but you can hear on the roll in and stuff, it was kind of struggling a little bit. So what I want to try to do now is combine the two. So I'm going to hook up the carburetor and hook up the fuel injection and just use the fuel injection to like dial in some of the areas of the carburetor. Let's find out if it works. Using the combination of carburetor and fuel injection, we were able to dial in our combination on the carbureted M90 especially on the load-in. Let's take a look at what happens when we installed our Holley 650 Ultra XP carburetor on our M90 supercharger. This was the aluminum 5.3. It had ported Trick Flow 220 ASCAS heads that had been ported by the guys at Brian Tooley Racing. It had the small Elgin camshaft in it. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you guys can take a look at it. It had, we were running with a Holley HP management system and fuel injected form. We had 80 pound injectors. We had the early uh, Gen 3 M90 supercharger with a stock throttle body. But then I, as I showed, I have the adapter with a 92 millimeter throttle body feeding the stock throttle body and the stock throttle body was just wired open. Inch and seven eighths headers, our Mazir pump, you know, typical stuff when we run this 5.3 liter and run with that Gen 3 blower and a 3.8 inch pulley. This thing didn't even make one pound of boost. So the blower basically is just keeping up with the NA motor on this combination because let's face it it was in that configuration it was designed to just feed a 240 horsepower motor i'll show you uh what happens when we go up and boost we put a smaller pulley on it but it did like the carburetor this is our fuel injected version made 425 horsepower and 390 foot pounds of torque Here's what happened when we added the carburetor to it. It did indeed pick up power, 427 horsepower and 393 foot-pounds. You can see some gains through the curve. And I attribute that primarily to a drop in charge temperature when we're running the carburetor. Even though in this configuration, we're only running basically one pound of boost or less than one pound of boost, the the charge temperature drop offered by the carburetor was as much as 50 or 60 degrees depending on you know how high the boost was and and particularly with the 2.6 inch pulley which i'm going to show you in just a second there was definitely a drop in charge temperature so it would do two things one we see a little bit more power but it would also make the thing you know less susceptible to detonation because it would have a lower charge temperature it's basically a form of intercooling when you're um, drawing fuel through the blower although it does displace a little bit of the air let's take a look at this is what happened when we added um you know more it it makes more boost when we spin the blower faster we put a 26 2.6 inch pulley torque was up near 500 foot pounds we started to get into belt slippage otherwise the horsepower would have been over 500 horsepower too unfortunately we ran into belt slippage past 6,000 rpm this is pretty consistent with uh the efi stuff and with the other carburetor i'll show you a photo here where we just we i hollowed out a blower housing and then we mounted a carburetor right on top of the blower so we tried carburetors in both positions and both of them obviously worked fairly well but now let's take a look at some uh, interesting information on the air fuel and I'll show you what the limitations are of having trying to run a carburetor and fuel injection. Now let's take a look at the changes in air fuel curves when we were able to adjust things. We're going to talk about the also the limitation of carb combining carburetion and fuel injection and what you'd have to do to adjust this. So this is actually the air fuel cur curve 
that we ran on the poll that I showed you with the EFI. This looks like it's a big fluctuation, but this is about a half an air fuel point change. So it's really not that much. We started out uh, 11.6, dropped down to 11.4, essentially nothing. Um, got a little bit, started going a little bit lean at 4,500. We were, you know, we could we adjusted that out. 4,500, uh, 12.0, and then back down to 11.4 or so, ended up at 11.6. So it's moving around a little bit. And so for the guys that are interested, think that, oh, no, this has to be perfectly flat. <laughs> no, when we made it perfectly flat, it didn't change the power output at all. So this air fuel curve, even though it looks like this because of the scale, is obviously right. <laughs> but here's what happened when we ran our carburetor. And you can see, I'm going to go ahead and move myself out of the way here, maybe all the way down here. So this up here, uh, as I said, on the load-in for the carburetor, 12.5, it's, it's really too lean as we're loading in. And then it dips way down to 10.9, uh, below 11.0. Then it's pretty good in the middle part here. And then starts to get lean out here past 5,500, gets all the way back up to 12.4. And then ends up uh, not too bad, but still a little bit on the lean side, 12.3, 12.2. But obviously you wouldn't want that. And we could have spent a lot of time with a carburetor. We could have tried um, more more squirter for the initial load in. You could have tried power valve boost referencing. We could have done a few things with the carburetor to try to make it better. But what we did was, here's what happened when we combined the fuel injection and the carburation. It's just flat like everybody wants it to be. It varied from 11.5 to 11.7 all the way across the board so it was nice on the roll in it was in the it is in the 11 7 11 5 range you know nice and safe all the way through and that's what can be done with fuel injection but in order to do that and this is one of the limitations is if the uh, with the carbur with the carburetor if the air fuel is too rich we can't do anything with fuel injection because all you can do is add fuel when you have the carburetor on there and the fuel injection. All you can do is put more fuel in. You can't take any fuel away. You can't get a number that's less than zero. The only way to make that happen is if you were to lean everything out with a carburetor and then add it in with the fuel injection and then dial it in and make the curve nice and smooth like we did here. But that obviously isn't ideal because there's no reason to spend money on a carburetor and fuel injection. We could just have one or the other. But as we said, the benefit of having the carburetor, extra charge cooling if you wanted to do it, it was pretty cool. I was very happy just taking the carburetor out you know, from the cabinet, putting it on and rolling into it. And although, although it was a little lean, it just ran perfect on the very first run. Armature Golder, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. They'll do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.